So, what I'm doing right now is uh, we're going to go through the calibration process for setting up the Vive. Uh, this is the Steam VR uh, setup here. Uh, basically, it basically tells you to clear out a space like I've done. You need at least 1.9 by, or sorry, 1.8 I think by 2 meters. So, uh, 5 by uh, five feet by 6.5 feet is the minimum space that you can have, which is pretty close to what I've got. Uh, I have about six by seven feet. Um, so we're gonna go, and the first thing it wants to do is find the tracking for the headset. Uh, it can find it right away because it's just plugged in, but the controllers obviously need to be turned on. And there they are. Okay, perfect. Now I've got this on the floor because I've been through this before and it tells you you need to have it on the floor in the center of the room. <clears throat> All right, so this is the monitor calibration. So basically what it's doing is it wants to know where the orientation of your monitor is so that I can try and, if possible, point you away from your computer. Uh, so you basically just point your controller at the monitor, pull the trigger, and hold it until it's done. Uh, the trigger will, or the, the controller will actually vibrate while that's, that process is happening, and there's a bar on the screen that, that fills up. Um, once that's done, you just click next, and this is where you calibrate the floor. Now, I don't want to be standing in front of this sensor when it's calibrating the floor, so I'm going to move in front of the camera briefly. Uh, and basically, there's one sensor up there, one sensor up there. They both have to see where the headset is, and it's where it. Uh, that's how it determines where the zero point for the floor is. So we're just going to calibrate. And it worked properly the first time. Sometimes it doesn't. Depends how light your room or how dark your room is. Uh, okay, and now the next thing it wants to do, I'm just going to move this out of the way. Next thing it wants to do is measure your space. So to measure your space, basically you need one controller. And you're going to go and map around the perimeter of your area while holding the trigger. Now, one thing to keep in mind is, like for example, this. This is a display cabinet right here. You don't want your perimeter to be like touching it. You want it at least a few inches away from the wall so that you're not like accidentally reaching past it and smashing it. Unfortunately, I don't have a big enough space to give a, a huge buffer. I can only stay a couple of uh, inches away. It works, but you're probably going to want to try and avoid pointing in that direction. If you can, point away from that sort of thing. Uh, and just basically try and stay away from your wall if you can. Uh, so just go next and it gives you kind of like this gray, uh, blank screen is mapping all the, uh, the things that can tell you where your uh, uh, sensors are and uh, it can see where they are in space and you can see that that's basically the maximum size uh, that you can get. So uh, where you see like the black area, you can go all the way to the corner with the sensors, but you can't go out to here, for example. That's the 16.4 feet in between diagonally. Now, uh, to do the mapping, basically just stick your hand out in one area or one spot and then start tracking it. Now, I'm going to go just beyond the camera here. And you can go around obstacles like you might have just seen when I'm going around here. Right? You want to make sure that you're trying to stay away from being outside of the range of the, uh, the sensors, basically, or the base stations. Basically, you need to not occlude it. So that's why I did that spin over here and kind of back behind. Because I wanted to make sure that that sensor didn't lose the tracking on here because at this angle that one barely sees it. Okay, now you might not be able to see it on the screen here, but it's kind of mapped out my area with like a, a blue line. Now the next thing I do, I click next, and it shows a green space that's your main play area. Now you're able to walk into any of the extra area, but you need to have at least that green space. If it can't make a green box, which is uh, 2 meters by 1.8 meter, uh, it can't play. So you can't do room scale without that much space. Uh, and it needs to be floor to ceiling space, basically. You don't, you can't count on top of the couch because you'll bash your knees into it. Uh, so this one's good. I wanted to see if I can actually, you can go to edit 
and you can reorient but this one's not going to let me so I'm just going to go back this way so we're just going to have to be facing this way which is fine I don't want to be facing that way because it's too close to the cabinet but this is fine and we're done and that's it that's the steam calibration system, uh, setup it's very simple there's not really much to it now the the zero point for the floor should be right so when you load up a game you should be standing on the floor if the calibration didn't work correctly you might be in the floor or you might be in the ceiling or whatever so basically you just want to make sure that that's done correctly by making sure that the headset's on the floor if it didn't work the first time just go back through it again sometimes it takes two or three tries but uh, it seems to be the uh, the final software should be better it, uh, going based on my experience over the last month with the beta software so um, it should be pretty good and it's very simple it takes like you said like you saw a couple of minutes just to do that part uh, set up to put up the hardware and plug it all in that takes you about a half an hour um, so it's not bad it's probably about a half hour to an hour to get you all set up from pulling out of the box to uh, going if you know what you're doing